All right, so we're going to start talking about rational exponents. And all, all we mean by rational is that this keyword ratio that we're talking about fractional exponents. And so really we've been dealing with them all along just in disguise. And so you've solved equations like 2x squared equals 50. And you actually use fractional exponents. You just didn't think about it as such. You divided by 2, and so you got x squared equals 25. And then you guys took the square root of both sides. And so you took the square root of x squared. And every time we took the square root, we wanted to remember that we had plus or minus. And so we got x equals plus or minus the square root of 25, which was plus or minus 5. Another way of thinking about uh, taking the square root of both sides is raising both sides to the one-half power. Um, now, raising both sides to the one-half power still causes you to have the plus or minus because it's just like a square root. But what happens with these powers of the exponents is that 2 times one-half is just becoming x because 2 times 1 half is just x to the first power. And then 25 to the 1 half is still just the square root of x, just in disguise, and so we get plus or minus 5. So the whole purpose of it is why, why do we need it? Because we've already been using the square root, and so why do we need to know that that's the same thing as 1 half? Well, we shall see. Sometimes it's, it's easier to have fractional exponents, and sometimes it's easier to have square roots because it's more use. Um, we've seen it a lot more. And so what, what, we need to, we, what we need to realize is that the square root of 25 is the same thing as 25 to the 1 half power. And in the same way, if you're taking the square root, or sorry, the cubed root of 20, that's the same as 20 to the one-third power. And so realize that the square root is really a, a two in disguise here. And so the cubed root is the opposite of cubing something. So one-third, raising it to the one-third power is the opposite of cubing something. And so first thing you'll have to be able to do is be able to work these without a calculator. And so realizing that 36 to the one-half power is really asking you to take the square root of 36. And so that's asking, okay, well, what times itself is 36? And that's 6. Um, sometimes we get mixed up as to why did we include the plus or minus up here but not include the plus or minus down here. The difference is in solving the equation. Up here we had x squared equals 25 when you answer the question 5 squared or negative 5 squared equals 25. But down here, this is just what we call the principal square root. And so we just take the positive. What if we had negative 64 to the one-third power? That would mean the cubed root of negative 64. Or what times itself three times is negative 64? So we have to start getting a little bit better at our perfect cubes. But we get 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And so if we have a negative 4 times a negative 4, that's a positive 16. And if you multiply it by negative 4 again, you get negative 64. Uh, in the same way, we should be able to reduce things like um, the fifth root or negative 32 raised to the one-fifth power. And that's the same thing as the fifth root of negative 32. And the reason I convert this back into what we call radical notation is just because that's what we're more, more comfortable with. And so what times itself five times is 32? Well, once you start multiplying numbers by themselves, they get big really fast. And so you'll start realizing that there aren't very many options that don't get so big. So let's just try two. Two times two is four. If you multiply it by two again, you get eight. Multiply it by two again, you get 16. Multiply it by two again, you get 32. So if you multiply it by a negative two, 
five times. Anytime you have an odd number five times, you're going to get a negative number in the end. So, we have to talk some, some exponent rules because these problems get a little more complicated with the fractional exponents. And so, from before, we have to remember that we had x squared cubed and what we did with that. Because that was x squared times x squared times x squared, we just multiplied these exponents. This meant x squared times x squared times x squared. And so we have 6x's, or just the result of multiplying. So now what we have to do, using the same kind of property, but just in reverse, we can simplify 4 to the 3 halves without a calculator. And so, going backwards, we want to separate this going from 6 into 2 times 3. And so we're going to separate this, and we usually go smaller first. So I'm going to go 4 to the 1 half power first, and raise that to the third power. 1 half times 3. is still 3 over 2, because we multiply fractions by multiplying the top, multiplying the bottom. And so we have to realize what 4 to the 1 half is. We just talked about how that is really the square root of 4 cubed. And so that is 2 cubed. And so 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And so 4 to the 3 halves is 8. Um, you can practice this on your calculator if you just type in 4 to the 3 halves power. So another thing we have to remember how to deal with are negative exponents. And so if you remember from before, if we had x to the negative second power, we could deal with that by bringing it to the bottom because that just meant that we had more x's left over on the bottom. Um, kind of like the result of x to the fifth divided by x to the seventh. There's two more left on the bottom. Five minus seven is negative two, and so we have to bring it to the bottom. And so we could answer a question like this one, where we have nine to the negative one-half. And so nine to the negative one-half, we can take care of the negative exponent, by bringing it to the bottom, 1 over 9 to the positive 1 half. Just like negative 2 became positive 2, 1 half becomes positive. Now, 9 to the 1 half, 9 to the 1 half power really means the square root of 9. And I'm going to keep writing that until we sort of get used to seeing it. And then the square root of 9 is 3, so we're left with 1 third. And finally, we have a combination of those two. If we had x squared raised to the negative third power, we might take and make it 1 over x squared to the positive third, and then make it 1 over x to the sixth power. And so we're going to combine those first two when we do something like 32 to the negative three-fifths. And so first thing I'm going to do is bring it to the bottom using our property of negative exponents. One over 32 to the three-fifths. And then make it smaller first. On the last, on the very first one, we, um, we made it four to the one-half raised to the third. We split up the three halves, made it one half first, and then three. So we're going to split it up and make it 32 to the one-fifth first, and then cubed. So what that is, we already answered um, 32 to the one-fifth power before. That's the cubed root, sorry, the fifth root of 32, which was 2. So we get 1 over 2 cubed, because 2 times 2 times 2 5 times is 32, so the fifth root of 32.